therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Backslider is a harsh word. When we think of a backslider, we think of someone who has really blown it, whose life is in the pit. But did you know that you can come to church every Sunday and still be a backslider? That's because backsliding is a matter of the heart. Now you might say, I still go to church when I can find the time. I still read the Bible if I get around to it. And I still obey God unless it conflicts with what I want. But I wouldn't describe it as backsliding. I'm just not as active spiritually as I once was. Consider this. The moment that you ease to progress as a Christian is the moment when the process of backsliding will potentially begin. When you cease to go forward, it's only going to be a matter of time until you start going backwards. We as Christians constantly need to be aware of falling away from backsliding. The Bible warns that in the last days there will be many who will fall away. I have to keep my guard up because if I am not moving forward as a Christian, I will be moving backwards. There is no standing still. It should be like parking your car on a hill and putting it in neutral. In the same way, if I put my Christian life in neutral, if I stop seeking to learn and grow as a believer, I will naturally go the wrong way. I will go backwards. I will go down. Keep moving. If you stop, you are in danger. Stay with us and let's look at the following story. Anyone can be restored. There is a fascinating true story about the Apostle John, narrated by the early church fathers Eusebius. The account goes that the elderly John took an affection and interest in a young man from Ephesus and subsequently entrusted him to the care of a bishop in vicinity, and that after a season this young man became entangled with a band of criminals and was corrupted by them, finally becoming their leader. When John returned after some time to search for the young man, expecting to find him spiritually well and maturing, the bishop despondently informed John of his fate. Eusebius writes, The apostle tore his clothing, beat his head and ground. A fine guardian I left for our brother's soul. But get me a horse and someone show me the way. He rode off from the church just as he was. When he arrived at the hideout and was seized by the outlaws' sentries, he shouted, This is what I have come for. Take me to your leader. When John uh, approached and the young leader recognized him, he turned and fled in shame. But John ran after him as hard as he could, forgetting his age and calling out, Why are you running away from me, child? from your own father, unarmed and old. Pity me, child, don't fear me. I will give account to Christ for you, and if necessary, gladly suffer death and give my life for yours, as the Lord suffered death for us. Stop. Believe. Christ sent me. The young man stopped, stared at the ground, threw down his weapons and wept bitterly. Flinging his arms around the old man, he begged forgiveness, baptized the second time with his own tears. John led him back and did not leave him until, through prayer, fasting and instruction, he restored him to the church. St. Paul said in Galatians 6.1, Brethren, if a man is overtaking any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. What an awesome story. 
I have used this story many times when talking to the despondent backslider who believes he can no longer be forgiven. Be an example of his love. No matter how far someone believes he has strayed from or even deserted the Lord, he can always be restored. Perhaps while hearing this message, the Lord is reminding you of a person with whom you can share this story. Just possibly you are the one that God wants to use to bring about his or her restoration. If so, I trust that reading of the Apostle John's loving example, you've been inspired by the compassion and grace of the Lord himself, feels towards his prodigals, and moved by his spirit to go out in faith and rescue the lost sheep. Let us pray together. My Lord Jesus Christ, dear God, you've given me a conscience that tells me right from wrong. Let me trust my conscience and let me live according to your teachings, not just for today, but forever. Amen.